Hello you lovely lot and welcome to a new video. My name is Katie and we're going to take a look inside the May Upcrate. Of course Upcrate is the other subscription box I, well, subscribe to and it is its time to be unraveled, unpackaged and turned into some art. This month's featured artist is Vivi Gonzalez Arts, and that's a pretty cute print actually. That is also on the wall with all of the others, but I like it. But let's face it, we're all really here for the contents of said box, so let's dive into it a little bit, shall we? We have a tube of Talon's gouache, extra fine and white. Do we have quite a lot of those in stock up, Crate? Because this is the third one we've had now. We have four tubes of the Rembrandt watercolours, extra fine, two Rembrandt coloured pencils, again the tiniest brush known to, well, the world of watercolours. I don't understand where they put such small brushes in for watercolours, you need something that's going to carry the water, but we'll get to that a little later. And we also have three sheets of the Artspace 100% cotton watercolour paper. Of course, let's not forget that we have the Upcrate bottle post and that has articles on the featured artist as well as a couple of other artists along with winners of previous prompts. Anyway, let's get straight into the fun stuff, shall we? The swatching. So, like I mentioned, we have three tubes of the Rembrandt Extra Fine Watercolour and we have them in a Cadmium Yellow, Indigo, Ultramarine Deep and a Quinacridone Red. And that's a pretty good selection of colours actually, the red isn't too warm or too cold and the yellows are yellow. I like the fact we've got an ultramarine there because that's quite a nice mixing blue but I, I, I am a big fan of indigo and I am very happy to see that in there. The white gouache is just a white gouache, it does what it does, it's pretty opaque, it goes over the areas and it didn't reactivate the layers beneath. The coloured pencils that we had are the Rembrandt Polycolour. And we have those in a dark sepia, sepia, whatever, and a gold ochre. Very nice. Oh, and let's not forget the paintbrush that was included, which I barely use. That is a Milan paintbrush in a size 0.0, .0 which is about as much patience as I have for using such a tiny brush and it being the only brush to use for the whole box. So yeah, I won't rant about that too much. But I do use my good old favourite artful brushes as well as probably others that you've seen me feature on this channel. Anyway, the painting has started so I should talk about that a little bit as we're going along. This month's prompt was Circular Village and any kind of urban sketching for me is just a big no-no. I, I just get a little bit too distracted trying to draw buildings and stuff so I kind of don't. I guess that's on the list of practice. So. I thought I would take a little bit more of a um, different route and do a bunch of mushrooms instead. They kind of look like little villages, the caps on them look like rooftops and I'm really trying my best to convince you here but that's what I went with. Admittedly I thought the subject matter that I chose would actually suit the colour scheme a little bit better. Again. I'm a big fan of that indigo and that was perfect as a base colour, especially just mixed in with a little bit of that cadmium yellow. Just created a nice sort of deep coloured background which I was really happy with. I loved how, again, that indigo just danced across the page when I did the wet and wet technique. It was chef's kiss good and I like that. But because it was such a deep dark colour that made all the other colours in front stand out a little bit more and that quinacridone red it, it, it hit right that's all I can say it hit right and when I introduced a little bit of the ultramarine blue in there just for the shading I was very happy with how that worked out too the paper I think we've had the art space 100% cotton paper before featured in boxes I really do wish though that you'd Put more than just three sheets in there, especially when we've got a lot of mediums to work with. The paper itself though is really nice and I'm quite a fan of the art space paper. I think pretty much all of the ones I've used have been good and I don't know, it just seems a shame that they don't include more of that in there. It has a slight texture to it and with it being made from 100% cotton, 
it means if you're doing a wet and wet technique it's going to stay a little bit wetter on the page for longer so if you like those colours dancing across the page I tend to find this stuff works really nicely. However it is, it's getting warm here in the UK and unfortunately it is not only the bane of my life on a personal level but from a painting level it's really annoying because the paint dries quickly and sometimes it's dried before I've finished doing what I need to do with it so I'm going to have to fi figure out a way of trying to combat that. I do actually have some potions in that I should really try. I think one's a glycerine based one and that just keeps the paint wetter for longer but then sometimes it keeps it wet for too long and I just need to figure that out and of course I'll let you know how that goes. I was a little bit dubious as to why two coloured pencils had been popped in here but actually you know what I was kind of glad that they were and I'm glad that they kept them to the same brand as well. It just worked really nicely for adding some outlines. Again this paper was a little bit textured so at least at my skill level or how I was feeling at the time of creating this I wasn't getting super sharp lines just with the paint alone so adding a bit of coloured pencil on there worked a treat and that dark sepia sepia whatever that was really dark it was it wasn't quite like using a black colored pencil but it, it was dark enough to add some good outlines there along uh, along with it just doing a good job with the tonal areas too it wasn't too invasive with the colors the yellow ochre that we've had worked really nicely for just adding a really subtle highlight as well obviously it wasn't meant to be there to go over the top of the highlights because we have that gouache to do that job but just to add a little bit of luminosity on the top of those mushroom caps worked a treat so can't grumble there mixing the indigo and again that cadmium yellow together i managed to create quite a well a pretty good green to be honest and allowed the wet and wet technique to just create all of those textures as i went along I obviously mixed up two lots of this colour, one with more indigo and one with more of that yellow and yeah I'm pretty pleased with how it went, I think it kind of balanced things out quite nicely. So let's talk about the fact it's the third watercolour box of the year and there's only been five months and three of them have all been watercolours. Now for me personally, that's great. I, I liked the Viviva watercolour sheets at the start of the year, I had a lot of fun with them. I quite enjoyed the little upgrade palettes that we got just last month and I'm pretty happy with these tubes of paint too because I don't have many Rembrandt ones and well the geek in me does want to try as many watercolours as possible so it appealed to that as well. However we can't ignore the fact though that fundamentally all three of those boxes, yes, they might have been different types of watercolours, but the principle is still the same. And we've had three of them. And I find it interesting as to why they keep doing that, but I'll find it even more interesting on what your thoughts are on this. Are you happy that we've had a lot of watercolours or are you rolling your eyes up thinking, no more, please, no more? Let me know down below. And do you reckon they're probably going to try and put some more watercolour kind of materials in there? I mean, you've got liquid watercolours, they might try that. You've also got the powder pigment watercolours, they might try that as well. And maybe this year, Wolf Crate is just going to be all about watercolours. Let me know down below what you guys think anyway. Saying that though, if they do keep putting watercolours in the boxes, can we at least have a decent sized paintbrush so the watercolours can move across the paper? That Milan brush we have is nice. I think I do use it a little bit on here, but it's too tiny. You can't really, you can't really appreciate the lovely, beautiful effects of these paints when you've got the tiniest paintbrush known to man to apply it with. I mean, You've got to have some patience there and unfortunately I don't so I guess I've uh, forfeited any chance of winning anything up crate wise by just not using that ridiculously small paintbrush. Anyway I'll stop ranting now and I'll, I'll start talking about how actually on a personal level I am quite enjoying watercolours at the moment. I know I've done quite a lot of ink work 
at least off camera and I have been making some lino block print videos that I'm going to share with you very soon but for some reason and I hate maybe maybe I can slightly thank Upcrate for this again I'm 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 not adverse to having all these watercolours I've kind of got back into it again it's been quite fun playing with the colours and if you'll have watched my recent scroller box video which was kind of watercolory kind of appeals to the inner child in me just playing with these colours so yeah and I'm, I'm kind of happy with that I also like to think as well I'm not quite so narrow-minded now when making it a mixed media piece and I guess with Upcrate, you, you really do get a bunch of other stuff with your watercolours. So it's been quite nice to, I guess, use coloured pencils alongside it this time. It's something I have done before in the past, but it's not something I frequently choose to do. So maybe it might just nudge me in that direction to play about a little bit more with these two different mediums. And I'm not going to count the gouache as a different medium because sometimes we just need a bit of the white gouache to add some highlights and we all do that anyway so we'll just leave that where it is now I'm gonna be quite objective here if I was a first-time subscriber of this box and I received this as my first box I would be pretty happy with it minus the brush and maybe a little bit more paper just so you can acquaint yourself with this material a little bit more but I actually thought again though this was a good box the magazine had lots of good useful tips in there as well as information about the product so I can't really grumble at that I think if this is your first experience with watercolours you've got some nice kit to play with and hopefully it might spark some curiosity to continue playing about with them but you will have to get some more paper and with this being a nice cotton based paper, well it's 100% cotton, you might be a little bit spoiled if you move on to wood pulp paper or cellulose paper which in my opinion I don't actually personally think there's anything wrong with. I've had some cotton watercolour papers which have been awesome awful and I've had some wood pulp based papers which have been perfect so I suppose really you're just gonna have to choose wisely paper wise for me a good substitute for this and it's I guess it's some paper I already have in but the grabby watercolor paper that I've featured on the channel before that's been a really nice substitute to work with it's slightly textured but the color tone of the paper and the weight and the fact that they're both made out of cotton I, I found that quite a good substitute but by all means check it out go on Jackson's wait till they've got a good paper sale and then treat yourself to some nice watercolor paper of course that's if you have enjoyed this box anyway waffling aside let's talk about what's going on here so it's time to add the stalks of these mushrooms and again that yellow okra worked out pretty well I managed to mix up a fairly decent brownish colour again just to add those ridges into the stalks there and the details and the tonal variations I think I used um, that green that I'd mixed up for all the mossy bits there and then just chucked in a bit of red and that worked out quite nicely and then when I wanted some slight variations I'd just add a little bit more yellow in there or a bit more red it, you, you, we all know I have to mix brown I did want there to be just a little bit more definition from the different layers of the background to foreground so I thought that using that indigo paint would work perfectly and that did quite a nice job just making everything pop and stand out a little bit more before I go on to adding the highlights with that gouache. Now please forgive me but by this point of filming because this did take quite a while uh, my memory card kind of died halfway through so I did have to cut filming short it was either that or I waste a load of paint faffing around clearing memory cards so the struggle is real however you will see though that it mixed up pretty well with those watercolors and you could create some more pastel tones obviously that's going to work out quite nicely for adding highlights on there too but you'll see a brief snippet of how I do it and it's literally how I normally apply paint. It didn't disturb the layer underneath so it was all good and I'm sure in a moment we'll probably cut to the final piece because that was the very last part I did on this. So quick conclusion, yes I enjoyed this box, it was a hit for me and I quite enjoyed the piece I did with it. 
I think quite recently just having some colours to play about with has been what I've needed and maybe, maybe what was missing during that time of art block. Anyway, here's the final piece. Let me know down below what you think. Of course, did you also enjoy this box too? As always, thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate every single click on these videos and it means a lot to me that you enjoy them too. Of course, as always, there should be some on screen that I think you're gonna enjoy afterwards, so by all means, click on them. But in the meantime, I'll see you lovely lot soon. Bye.